I want to just look at one verse of Scripture this morning, and I trust that God will speak to our hearts together. If you turn your, your Bible to Revelation, the book of the Revelation, chapter 21, I'm going to read just one verse of Scripture. Revelation chapter 21. It's good to hear those Bible leaves turning. Revelations 21.10. Revelation 21.10. And he carried me away in the Spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. I want to preach on just three words that I've read you. That great city. That great city. Are you ready to go there? The Christian's got another place to live. This world is not my home. <laughs> I'm just passing through. Just going to be here a little while. Now, I'm going to say a few things about this city, if God will help me. But first, I want you to get this picture of what this city is going to be like. That capital city of that eternal land where God's people are going to go and live forever. That ought to get us excited. I want you to think about a city that would reach from Castalia, Ohio to Miami, Florida. You'd be in the city limits of Jerusalem, this Jerusalem I'm talking about, here in Castalia, and you'd have to drive all the way to Miami, and you're still in the same city. 1,500 miles. If that city was put, had streets squared like a checkerboard, there would be 7,500,000 streets in that city. Now, if you convert that into blocks, or how many city blocks there will be in this celestial city, there would be 937 billion, that's with a B, 937 billion, 500 million blocks in that city. Now, there's going to be ample room in heaven for everybody. If it was populated to just what it could comfortably feel, it would take one quadrillion. I said one quadrillion. And add to that one quarter more quadrillion, and you'd have, that's about a thousand times more people than have ever lived on this earth. There's going to be room in heaven. I intend to go there. I don't know about you, but I get to study it about once in a while, and it blesses my soul. I was, I was studying back some time ago about this city, and I just begin to jot down some things that I think will be there, and then I jot down some other things that won't be there. Now, I don't know about you, but some of the things that will not be there makes me as excited as some of those things that will be there. And I began to jot them down, and I had, I, I came, I listed on one side the positives, what will be there, the other side the negatives, and I got to 25 just by listing and not taking much time to do it. So that's 50 points. So I hope you brought your lunch with you. But I don't know about you, but to me, this city is a real place. I'm still an old-fashioned preacher. I still preach that life is short, that eternity is long, that heaven is real, that hell is hot, that sin is black. I still believe in old-fashioned Holy Ghost preaching. I still believe in telling it like it is and depending upon God to send it into the hearts of people. I believe this book will change the lives of men and women. I've been preaching it too long now, and I've seen too many lives change for anybody to tell me any different. 
I believe that, that this thing is real and your life can be changed. I don't care what it's been. It doesn't matter what you've done. God is still able to change your life and make you what you ought to be for Him. So first of all, this is going to be a city of light where there will be no darkness. The positive will be light forever. Can you imagine a place where it will never be dark? Oh, how many of us have experienced those hours of darkness? That's when weeping comes and when we're all alone with God and, and when the burdens are hanging low and when we don't know which way to turn and it's dark all around us and every direction we look it seems even darker. We wonder how we're going to go. We wonder how we're going to solve this and solve that. We wonder how we're going to climb that mountain and thank God I'm glad there's a place coming where there'll be no darkness forever and forever for the one who said in the beginning let there be light. He spoke to this old black world and it became a, a lighted world for us to live in. What do you say? I, I agree with Pastor Rusty this morning as he was teaching on evolution and teaching on creation. I believe God spoke light to this dark world. I believe it came about by God creative power. I believe he spake and it was done when he said let there be light. There was light. Thank God. But he, he put the sun to control it by day and the moon to control it by night. But there's coming a time when the sun will turn black as sackcloth of hair. The moon will turn to blood. There's coming a time when every star will fall from its sockets of the heavens. Uh, there's coming a time when every mountain will disappear, every island will disappear, but thank God there's still going to be a city where God's people will live forever and forever and forever. Somebody ought to say amen. I say glory to His name. I say praise the Lord. 